There we go. Now can you hear me? We should have sound. We should have visuals. Uh, you don't need to adjust your screen. It is supposed to be very dark. Uh, that's how the, the Easter Vigil begins. Um, in the original, uh, in the original email, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, good. Amy says we have sound. I'm going to trust Amy. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Again, um, it is supposed to be dark. That's okay. And um, the program uh, for this evening, which will be very helpful for you, I will send out a link to it via the email. Um, was uh, A link to it was sent via the email, and I think um, Amy maybe can put it in uh, in the comments as well. Um, in case you need to download that. Uh, so I hope you have found that and you can download it and follow along uh, the liturgy uh, on the program. Now, we will begin. Thank you, Lord, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. His are the times and the ages. To him be glory and dominion throughout all ages of eternity. Amen. By his wounds, most glorious. May Christ the Lord. Guard us and preserve us. Forever. May the light of Christ gloriously rising dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Rejoice. Now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor. 
For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great rite. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by blood, his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. Ah. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Ah, how wonderful and beyond our knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us that to redeem a slave you gave a son? Ah, how holy is this night when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred, and brings peace and concord. Ah, how blessed is this night, when earth and heaven are joined, and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. Who, he who gives his life to all creation, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, 
how he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. You may be seated. The first lesson, the story of creation. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the day dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruits, trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly in the earth, across the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great the, the creature God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the cattle according to their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the ground, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. 
Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host with them. And on the seventh day God finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Here ends the reading. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the heart. Pray to him upon the psaltery and lyre. Sing for him a new song. Sound a fanfare with all your skill upon the trumpet. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, by the breath of his mouth all the heavenly hosts. He gathered up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin, and stored up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord, let all who dwell in the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to pass, he commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to naught. He thwarts the designs of the peoples. But the Lord's will stands fast forever, and the designs of his heart from age to age. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share in the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humility. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second lesson, Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, beginning at the 10th verse. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were in great fear. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Is it because there is no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go on dry land through the sea, and I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord who went before the host of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and the darkness, and the night passed without anyone coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the host of the Egyptians, 
and discomfited the host of the Egyptians, clogging the chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us free, flee from this, uh, flee from before Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the water, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned its wonted flow. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not so much as one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And, the, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great works of the, that the Lord did against the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang a song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider have, has he thrown into the sea. Here ends the reading. I will sing to the Lord, for he has risen up in mind. I, I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my the strength, my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my salvation. This is my God and I will praise him, the God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them, and they sank into the depths like a dry, like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in strength and might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretch forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led the people you redeemed. With your might you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. A resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, a sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord, o, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. I will sing, sing to the Lord, for he has risen up in life. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deed of old shines forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm the chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The third lesson, the Valley of the Dry Bones, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, Chapter 37, beginning at the first verse. The hand of the Lord was upon me, 
And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me round among them. And behold, there were very many upon the valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, there were sinews on them. Then flesh came, had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, and an exceeding, exceedingly great host. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you home into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, that I have done it, says the Lord. Here ends the reading. You have restored my life, O Lord. Hallelujah. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to hell. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of the eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried out to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. You have me. Stored my life, O Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit in the, your, the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The fourth lesson, salvation offered freely to all. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, beginning at the first verse. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, or without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is not satisfied? Hearken and diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call the nations that you know not, and the nations that knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will richly and abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, and return not thither, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Here ends the reading. Sing the, sing the praises of, of the Lord, for he has done great things. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing, from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Let us pray. O God, you have created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory be to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both by, in body and mind, may worship in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's be seated. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. Sorry, from the Epistle to the, of St. Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him in, by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body, sinful body may be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also may consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. According to St. Matthew, glory to you, Lord Christ. 
now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the, to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. What comes next is the Paschal homily of St. John Chrysostom. St. John Chrysostom lived in the late 300s and early 400s um, and was patriarch of Constantinople. This sermon was written around the year 400 by him and delivered by him on Easter Day. And it is customary in the Eastern Orthodox Church at this service, the Easter Vigil, to read this sermon. And I know uh, many Episcopal churches that have done the same. And so without further ado, here is the Paschal homily of St. John Chrysostom. If any be a devout lover of God, let him partake with gladness from this fair and radiant feast. If any be a faithful servant, let him enter rejoicing into the joy of his Lord. If any have wearied himself with fasting, let him now enjoy his reward. If any have labored from the first hour, let him receive today his rightful due. If any have come after the third, let him celebrate the feast with thankfulness. If any have come after the sixth hour, let him not be in doubt, for he will suffer no loss. If any have delayed until the ninth hour, let him not hesitate, but draw near. If any have arrived only at the eleventh hour, let him not be afraid because he comes so late. For the master is generous and accepts even the last as the first. He gives rest to him who comes at the eleventh hour. In the same was, him, was as him who had labored from the first. He accepts the deed and commends the intention. Enter then, all of you, enter into the joy of our Lord. First and last, receive alike your reward. Rich and poor, dance together. You who fasted and you who have not fasted, rejoice together. The table is fully laden. Let all enjoy it. The calf is fatted. Let none go away hungry. Let none lament his poverty, for the universal kingdom is revealed. Let none bewail his transgressions, for the light of forgiveness has risen from the tomb. Let none fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed death by undergoing death. He has despoiled hell by descending into hell. He has vexed it, even as it tasted of his flesh. Isaiah foretold it when he cried. Hell was filled with bitterness when it met thee face to face below. Filled with bitterness, for it was brought to nothing. Filled with bitterness, for it was mocked. Filled with bitterness, for it was overthrown. Filled with bitterness, for it was put in chains. Hell received a body, 
and encountered God. It received earth and confronted heaven. O death, where is your sting? O hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power, now and forever, and from all ages to all ages. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you everyone for being here with me. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow morning. Thank you to uh, Amy, our communications director, for helping me get this set up and some last minute technical fixes. I do want to show you, unfortunately the shot doesn't do it justice, I want to show you down here what the, altar, uh, the, the Flower Guild has done. Three members of the Flower Guild gathered these from their lawn uh, and one of them arranged these and they were uh, delivered to my home here um, to make my little makeshift altar here in my in my dining room. So I hope you'll join me again tomorrow morning at 10:30 uh, for Holy Eucharist. And uh, until then, Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. <laughs>